All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Apologies. I'm in a hotel room uh, in Nigeria. Um, but but excited to, <laughs> but excited to be here today. Uh, thanks for the invite. So I'll just be talking a little bit about <clears throat> AI and chess mission. Right. Um, my main disclosure is that you know I do global health work um, with Radit International, where I sit on the board of um, directors. So I'm just gonna jump right into it, right? So and 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 cardiac thoracic imaging, um, a lot of the potential we've seen in AI is actually in, in low in low resource settings, right? So you know while we are working through you know FDA clearances and you know exactly how you know AI is going to be used in, in you know in the U.S. You know this is a recommendation that came out in 2021 by the WHO, essentially saying that. You know, computer aided detection can be used uh, as an alternative for interpreting chest X rays for TB screening and triage, right? So, you know, here we have AI being given a green light to be used in a clinical setting. And ever since then, in 2021, it has been extensively used already. This is just an example of what we're seeing in a place like Nigeria where um, we're having. Um, AI um, softwares for um, chest X-ray interpretation being put on portable um, portable devices and taken into the rural uh, areas to screen for tuberculosis. Now this is great, um, but it's important to understand that a lot of this is being is actually being done without radiologist supervision. Um, contrary contrary to what you might hear, um, it, it is unfortunately um, happening without our um, direct involvement. So this is something that we need to be aware of. And like I said, these devices are proliferating. This is an example of what it looks like. Um, size of the camera. Some, you know, I'm not endorsing one any one product, by the way, but but there's two main um commercial companies that are um that are dominating the the market right now. As you can see, uh, this is actually a picture of me and um one of um actually a, a friend of mine who um works for one of the companies is demonstrating um you know how this could be really done anywhere, right? So this is somewhere actually in my university. You know, he just. And we were in the conference room and he just took an x-ray of me. Again, really a camera, a stand, and a laptop. And um, without a need for a radiologist, without a need for a technologist, actually. And I know they're now expanding these use cases to include MSK, you know. But 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 really, so far, it's been mainly a thoracic imaging application, specifically chest x-ray. Now, you know, we we um, <clears throat> at Radiant have been working to um, implement AI and um, th for thoracic imaging around the world. And we recently published a paper demonstrating our implementation strategy and um, how we installed AI for two hospitals, one in Nigeria and one in Guyana. And it, it, this is a build, this is a follow up to a previously published uh, paper about about our about our strategy right so this is a paper um that you can look up it demonstrates the actual results and you know the actual implementation signs using um education which is kind of what um jordan is um leading right now um because first you need to educate people about you know basic uh, clinical education as well as ai education you need to do some infrastructure implementation and then a phase AI introduction to allow for local validation and other things, which I'm going to discuss uh, a little bit. So, so th this is the PAC system that we um, uh, deployed back in 2019. Um, it, the the infrastructure allowed for uh, an on-prem server, 
and basically a, a mirror um, viewer uh, um, that could be uh, uh, accessed from, from the public cloud, okay? And this infrastructure allowed us to be able to install AI software and continue to install AI software even, even remotely. And it also allows for remote interpretation of images. This is a study that I, I, can, I was able to pull up from my laptop um, here in the US. And this is what the infrastructure looks like. So like I said, we have a on-prem uh, PAX server, which you know allows for, for folks to work in the hospital and, but also basically a cloud platform in which this server is backed up to, um, and which allows for um, installation of multiple AI and clinical applications, even remotely. And this is just an example of, of the AI software that they have for chest x-ray interpretation. You know, these, these um, solutions often can or could be used for multiple different um, uh, detection, um, multiple different disease detections, right? Or it could be limited to answer a particular question, right? Like tuberculosis, yes or no, right? Or I, and as we know, the more choices we include in the um, in in the solution, the, typically the less um, accurate that the um, uh, that the algorithm um, becomes. So it's important to understand that you know there's there's room to um, or, or rather these algorithms should be tailored to the particular use to increase its um its um specificity and general um, usefulness. This is just an ex another example of, of the output for chest X-ray interpretation. Um, again, it points out to the areas of abnormality as well as a, a PDF that could be um, that um, that 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 is sent back into the PAC system that that could be retrieved at any time. So, you know, like I said, after clinical education and infrastructure implementation, such as PACs, you definitely want to always do a local validation. So, this is just a local validation. Um, this this should not make any sense to anybody, but it just um, just demonstrates the steps that um, should be taken typically, um, regardless of where you are, um, to to validate the the solution in your own um, uh, in your own local setting. Now, this is a paper that came out re um, recently, um, September tw um, twenty sixth. I'm just including here, um, just to emphasize the point that I made. Which is, um, you know, in, in this paper they they did a retrospective study of four commercially available AI tools, and, and they looked at a bunch of chest X rays, and um, they looked at detecting S rays disease and motorax um, on on uh, pleural effusion, and they essentially found that the AI specificity was high for normal or single findings, but lower for multiple findings. Now, I guess what is making the, the headline is that is in, is is what we see in the last um, bullet, which is false positive rates were higher for AI than radiology reports, and um, where for where false positive rates were similar, right? So, sorry, false positive rates were higher for for AI, but the false negative rates were similar. Essentially saying that AI was not as good as a radiology report. Now, the conversation around this is, you know, to remember that oftentimes AI doesn't have the clinical context that a radiology might have, you know, and um, AI cannot obviously look at the prior, oftentimes cannot look at the prior study, most times cannot look at the, um, the uh, clinical notes and, and um, other things. Obviously, as the as the tools get better, some some of this can change, but it's 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 important to for us as radiologists to to uh, to point these out um, and to and to advocate for the need for patients to have a complete evaluation by um, a physician, if possible, uh, rather than just um, AI software in isolation. Okay, depending on the clinical scenario. So what are some other applications in thoracic imaging? Quite a lot, actually. I mean, you know, I, you know, I'm not really, not to compare with other um, body parts, but, you know, 
I think you know, I think thoracic imaging is probably up there as far as like um uh, having um multiple different AI uh use cases and applications. So these are just some um pulmonary embolism, uh, pulmonary embolism we know um is a big one. Nodule detection and classification is probably the biggest, right? CAD, um, pulmonary fibrosis, right? For for quantitative measurement of how how much of the lungs are involved, radiomics as um uh, Flo uh, talked about a little bit, cardiomegaly. Um, I know some folks are doing some research, uh, both on chest X ray and um chest CT, and of course coronary artery calcium scoring. Okay, so the you know these are just some you know there you know there's a lot more, and uh, I'm just gonna go over a few examples. Now, I chose this one in particular because this was something that was used um, in, the, in the Nelson trial, right? So the, the, the latest trial on lung cancer screening, right, uh, used volumetric measurements, right? Everyone knows volumetric measurements are better, right? They take, they, they, they're, they're better than two-dimensional measurements, but it's, you know, no radiologist is going to volunteer themselves to, to measure nodules I mean, we have a we have set enough that we have to measure nodules in one dimension. So we're definitely not going to be measuring nodules in a volumetric uh, way. But this is an area in which AI has um, shown to be um, relevant in the Nelson trial, where volumetric measurements were done, and um, it um, uh, demonstrated increased um, um, accuracy and um, 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 specificity compared to um, the prior trials that did not use this. And actually, if you look at the long rads, um, if you look at the, the long rads, um, the, the ACR long rads recommendation for lung cancer screening is actually included in volumetric measurements as as um, as an option for, for folks that have it. It just hasn't been picked up yet because it, it really would require everyone adopting an AI solution. Because like I said, no, no, Nobody else is gonna do it manually. But this just demonstrates how the images on the left, you know, I, I, I think we can all be convinced that the solid component here has increased, you know, after 13 months. But with the volumetric studies, you can see that the, the increase is significantly more than what it looks like on, the, on, on just the 2D um, CT. This is another, um, example that I think is, is also going to take off, right? The segmentation of the lungs, in this case for lung fibrosis, right? As a chest radiologist, we really don't have a way of grading pulmonary fibrosis, um, really, um, that I'm aware of, right? Um, as far as mild, moderate, or, or severe, I, I think most people just have a subjective feel. But this is a, this is a, this is an area that I, I, I think can easily um, be, um, which AI can easily be utilized for is is um, that sort of quantitative um, measurements, okay, and follow up over time. This is a, a paper that came out um, in um, radiology, cardiothoracic imaging, just just demonstrating the um, use of AI for for PEs. Now, for um, PEs, AI can be used for in different ways, right? So, I think a big one is triaging the the work list, right? As we know, volumes are getting higher and higher. People are reading um, their studies two days later, a week later now, right? Uh, in these cancer patients, right? And we also know that most PEs are actually found in cancer patients, not in PE studies. So I think this is this this, this is a great example of how you know AI can be used to augment the, the workflow. Right, it can, it can be used to potentially pick up PE studies in these in these patients who are who have the highest risk for uh, PEs, right? And who often times are not um, whose studies are not interpreted for days after, right? There, you know, there also uh, have been examples of AI, you know, sort of helping the the um, radiologists pick up more PEs, right? In, in those cases, often smaller, less clinically relevant PEs, right? But um, again, multiple different ways in which um, AI is already in use in cardiothoracic imaging. So, you know, those, 
there are definitely many more examples, but you know, I just wanted to highlight a few and um, let and um, conclude by saying that there are many use cases of AI in uh, thoracic imaging. We have seen a proliferation in LMICs and areas with radiology shortage, including in places in Europe, right? Where even in a place like England, we know a lot of chest x-rays are not interpreted. Um, and, and even some that are interpreted are not by physicians, right? So we're seeing a lot of studies there in which AI is going back and looking at chest x-rays and, and has demonstrated the, the, um, the possibility of picking up um, actually lung, uh, lung cancers on a um, chest x-ray. I, I personally think AI is going to be really useful for triage and for quantitative imaging. Um, um, you know, things like again, volumetric measurements, uh, measuring the extent of disease, right? Um, but as 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 has been pointed out in multiple um, articles, it's definitely limited when used for multiple findings and without relevant clinical information. So thank you very much. That's all I got today.